Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Silver Dragon here, coming at you with some more Masterwork Dwarf Fortress. Uh, Going to be continuing where we last left off with uh, Season 10, Part 24 of my No Item Embark Challenge. Now, of course, last time we still had issues with our waterfall. We're trying to tweak it. We're constantly at this point trying to tweak this thing in order to get it to work properly so we can have ourselves a beautiful waterfall system, giving us much needed mood boosting mist while still, you know, not causing us a crap ton of problems. <laughs> like this one appears to be. So hopefully the adjustments I'm making to it now will see to that. As well as we're going to be doing some patrols here today. We're going to be setting up some patrols. We're going to be building a little fort down in the first layer of the cave systems. And generally see how that goes. Alright, let's go ahead and scene on over here and crank this back up. Whoops, my bad. Okay, so. I'll let them do their thing for now. Let me hockey this. Actually, let's make sure that this is the right hockey. It is, okay. F4, zoom here. Which is the correct place to be zooming. Because, yeah, I accidentally thought, because of the Z levels, it's so close to it, I, didn't, I did not go down one more step. Cannot cancels boil egg. Needs on rotten egg producing mat. Cannot produce milk crafts. Stock level is low of yarn body parts. Cannot produce copper mail. So it's going through all of this stuff here and seeing what it can produce. Let's see... Struck a lot of different things. Raw mithril? Oh, where did we strike raw mithril? Oh, here it is. Actually, no, not really, is it? Ah, there we go. There it is. Apparently also some living rock. Is that what this is right here? Yeah, this is living stone walls. So, oddly enough, I can actually cut these down and butcher them even, I think. If I'm not mistaken, which is a little weird, but you know, it's Dwarf Fortress. Let me have them dig this bit up here a bit, just so we can get rid of some of this structure. I want a nice open area here for my uh, base. We designate any trees down here to be chopped. There we go. Let's gather any plants as well. There we go. So that'll give us a lot to do down here. Once somebody goes down and digs that one square, and hopefully the one next to it as well, let me actually remove this and then redesignate it just so that it gets priority. So hopefully, the next one they'll want to dig out will be the one right beside them. That's my hope though. Yep. Okay, good. It's worked. It worked. Huzzah! Let me see if I can have them dump these rocks out of here. Alright, good. I want to make a bridge here. This is to seal this off in case shit goes down. It's going to raise forward and close off this area. Actually, you know what? Let's have it raise backwards if I can. Make it a schist. It's what's close. Alright, now of course, I was wondering last time about exactly how I'm going to set up patrols. Now, if you look at N here, we have, of course, notes, routes, and points. So this allows us to set up a patrol route. So I'm going to go ahead and hit N, and at that N, capital N it would be, and R for roots, let's add a new root, alright, edit the waypoints on that root, so E, Ah, I see, I see. Add root. If I'm not mistaken, first I add the root right here. No, that's incorrect. Let's delete that root. 
Add waypoints, okay. This is definitely a little more complex than I thought it was. Damn, I'll be... Okay, let's place a new one here. Let's go cave patrol. All right. Now roots. Go to cave patrol. All right. In that case, I have to place several of these then. Okay. Go back to the other one here. Place note. Oh, no. That'll work. Roots. Add a waypoint. And then finally, you can see that the, the, it puts a line around it. So finally, if I place one last one over here. Name. And then go to root. Add a waypoint. You can now see that they'll go, they'll start here. They'll work their way down to this one. Now I could have made this a much, much wider, like go from here, down to here, to there. But this, this works for me, and this works for me. I could also have them go a little bit closer, but this is going to be a good patrol route for them to do. So I'll leave that as is. I'll leave that as is. Now let me go military, schedule. Actually, let me go back for a second here. Question is, which batch of fools do I want to send down here? That's the range squad. I'm not going to send the new guys down there. They still aren't fully armed. So it's going to be the Terrors of Tweeting. Alright. Active training. Let me remove that order. Let's say delete the... Whoops. Okay, good. New order. Patrol route. Route 1. I want a minimum of five of them down there at a time, I would say. That should be good. Oh, wait, I forgot. My bad. I had shift enter to complete it. There we go. Planning mode. All right. Table. Alright, perfect. Now I want to add two food storages down here. Settings. 
One is going to forbid everything except for drinks. And the other is only going to accept prepared meals. Settings, food. Make sure everything is forbidden except for prepared meals. Okay, which is you on the right side there. Alright, good. Now if I go upstairs... Well, I'll let them kind of run, their sel run themselves right now. I can't do it. I just can't. Item blocking the site. Oh, weird. Then remove it, damn it. So I need to get a lot of these idlers to work for me here. So apparently I forgot to remove all of this right here. Alright, fine then. Let's get a Mason's Workshop right over here. Um, do I want to... No, it should be fine. That should be fine for the moment. I probably should have moved these indoors though. question is, where the hell is my carpenter down here? Or did I even make one? Yes, I did. Okay, good. He is making beds as well. Build... No, sorry. Stockpile. Wood stockpile. Now, if I go up to this wood stockpile, I can tell it to give to a stockpile. Now I want to have it give to this stockpile. So they're going to take all the wood from this and they're going to fill up the other stockpile with it. Anytime that the other stockpile runs out, they'll take from this one and bring it down. So it'll give uh, orders for that, which is useful in certain cases. If I want them to store something up, up top temporarily, then move it down here later. That's a good way to do that. Now, food. Whole bunch of skin. Tough skin. Do I have a leather worker? I have a clothes or a workshop, a loom. I should have a tanner. Let me tab this over here. Whoops. Uh, clean and dry stomach into water skin, guts into a rope. Shear a fur or hair for in leather. Oh, for oh, so I see. Shear a fur for hair and leather. Ah, I can upgrade certain things. Comb a fleece, clean feathers, clean antenna pelt and a fur. Because we have all this skin and tough skin, and I don't see a way to use it. It's just clogging up my. Uh, Stockpile here. Hmm. Here we go. Might be under fat. You see a lot of skin. I don't necessarily want to, you know, restrict tallow. But screw it. Start preparing lavish meals all around. Oh, we got two kitchens here. Actually, let me re remove that. There we go. Have them prepare nothing but fine meals for now. Fine or lavish meals. We need to start using up a lot of that and making really valuable meals. 
Got quite a few dogs now as well. I'm gonna have to manage here soon. All right, everything seems to be going pretty well right now. We're, as long as we keep around a solid 30 FPS, this will more than likely keep going. Yeah, I know. Keep hauling. So we're producing a lot of doors, it looks like, but it's there's still rocks in the way, so we can't get them done correctly. So let's see here. What do I want? I want to get rock cabinets, definitely, rock coffers, and rock doors. No. 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 Never. No. It's like, that's all I hear from you dwarves. Makes you want to smack you around a bit. I want to try smoothing some of this out here if I can. Actually, you know what? No, it's not worth it. it Would have been a good idea if I'd done that earlier, but now it's just not even worth it. Looks like they're still smoothing out a little bit of this. Alright. We'll have them smooth out whatever they can whatever they can do here. Which isn't a whole heck of a lot. It's gonna look a little awkward after what this completed, but what can you do? Okay. How about downstairs? I want all this smoothed out as well. So my uh Let's get this as well. My guys have their work cut out for them, that's for damn sure. Sorry, I can't do it, sir. Oh yeah, it's because I got right. dump orders on all that stuff. Got no shoes. Get those Get shoes, boys! Shoes, boys. <laughs> uh, so we did build the walls here. I'll have to see what we're dwarves we're getting. So the walls I built to funnel my waterfall have been completed. Wait, floors? place walls here actually unless oh I see my bad because it's it is limestone floors up there but right here it's limestone pillars so never mind I did actually build it correctly so we can turn the waterfall system back on again if I can figure out which one that is I hear a waterfall power pull that lever So, let's see what new batch of joyful recruits we have here. As the flooding begins again. It's kind of funny that even one freaking pump can do this much water. A little ridiculous, actually. Straight Cragtooth Boar has been stung by a bee. It is now bee crazed and out for, ki out for the kill. Remember, usually I would check each and every individual one of these guys, check their histories, make sure they weren't any vampires among them. Competent. We got a couple of competent furnace operators here, it seems like. Or what is this? A baby drake. Oh god. Large reptile like creature. Aggressive and used as a guard animal. Can either shear its scales to make bronze uh, great armor from them. Oh, lovely. They also... I'm not sure if those ones spit fire or not, though. That's the thing. If that is one of the ones that spits fire, then we might be in some trouble. Alright, let's see what we got here. Group by migration wave. So we're now up to 120 dwarves. That should be the limit that I set for myself a while back. Well, I shouldn't say a while back. In the very beginning, that's the limit I set for myself. So this should be all the dwarves we are getting. I really should limit. I think any further episodes that I'm going to do 
or any for a further series I'm gonna do I'm gonna limit the dwarf count to a hundred because we really don't need more than that like managing a hundred dwarves is tough enough as it is and with that as well it allows us to uh, focus on each individual dwarf a lot more I actually kind of wonder though let me pull that up again read dwarves Congratulations, you guys get to do engraving for the rest of your lives. Commit that. But the thing I really wanted to do was sort by nothing. I want to check and see how good our cooks are. So, is it? Jarek has level 9 cooking, not bad, not great. Uh, Bem has level 6. Everyone else is a lot lower than that. I would rather have somebody who has one cooking working than somebody who has zero. There we go. You, sir, can go on the, uh, let me... The stone, wait, stone crafting? No, I want you to be an engraver as well. Okay. Commit that change. So I'll let them work at it. Now, the other one I wanted to do, of course, I think was look at the stone and rune engraving. So the main one we have at the moment, and they're all pretty fairly, they're all fairly skilled. Mr. Blackworth is a level 11 grand or grand great stone engraver. So he's doing pretty good. Because he's a jeweler's guild dwarf though, he is getting a negative buff to that. I should really see if I have the other guilds up. I actually don't have any of the guilds up and running, do I? I do not. That is a travesty, I should fix that. Now, what is the size of each guild? Actually, I'll probably put the guilds up top. Oh, god damn, that thing is huge! Ain't no putting that there, that's for damn sure. Hot damn. Well then, I'll need something at least the size of this. All right. What does it got here? Odd, oh, wait, that's not right. Yeah, I thought so. I thought my count was off. Alright. And we'll go ahead and put that right there. Okay, good. It's going to be a while before our miners get the chance to come up here. And actually, I should probably sort by migration wave. There it is. I should probably assign some of these newbies. Like a couple of them are furnace operators, so I'll give them, you know, various jobs along those lines. That one's a carpenter as well. Actually, I'll leave him to do that. As for the rest of you... You're all getting mining duty. 
Commit. So we've got a lot of mining to do and not a lot of dwarves to do it. So let's let them get to work. And a whole lot of hauling. Alright, so for the most part we got this going. We got this, uh... Yeah, that's done. We're still waiting on beds. Alright. Build trap lever. Alright, let somebody build that lever there. We're gonna hook that up to downstairs. That's gonna be our cave uh, wall or cave door switch. I can't do that there. I can't do that there. Are we still having problems? Why do you think I can do this? Yeah, okay, screw it. The waterfall is useless to me. Just freaking disassemble the whole thing. Disassemble the whole damn thing. No, I hate saying no to you, but no. It was a good idea, it was a good thought, but it's the execution is just poor. No, I can't do it. It's a damn shame, too. All of that work for nothing. Our waterfall system turned out to be absolute shite. Well, I think it still suffers from the same damn problem that the rest of it suffered from. I'm just spreading it out over too wide of an area. The waterfall systems that I've had in the past that have worked well have all concentrated their drop to a single point. So when the water drops, it doesn't drop on every single tile. It drops on just the center tile. That allows it to spread out and be, a, you know, as much, uh, in a less lesser degree. Like right now we're dropping so much across all tiles that it just screws with their freaking movement uh, priorities. And they end up suspending everything because they can't reach it. Because they're constantly having to recalculate their route. That's also probably a good portion of the lag as well. Yeah, you can see turning that off in its entirety, we're up to like 70 FPS here while well, it's going down again, but still. That's a good portion of our problem right there. Volcanic puzzles. New orders. All right. Military alert. Terrors of tweeting. All right. So those uh, two groups should now get to work. Have we engraved the whole hall here? We have. Okay, good. I still need to figure out a good portion of what their problem is, though. Because they don't seem to hang out in the dining hall enough. You see, this guy right here, he is eating at this table. I believe it's, it should be his table if I look at it. Yeah, it is assigned to him. So before, all you really had to do was you would designate an area as a dining hall and people would come in, they would eat as they needed to. And it wouldn't be a problem, but now it seems like, uh, you know, they're all like going into the, like right there, they're all drinking in the fucking storage room for alcohol. They're not taking the jug, filling up a mug or something and going over to the tables. 
They're just sitting there draining the entire bloody barrel or something. Well, then again, they're dwarves, so I guess I can't hold it against them too much, but still. Lazy bastards can get to work. Alright, let's take a look down here. This guy's storing an item in a stockpile. You can see that we have right here. We have Mr. Corvus, we have Toast, and all the others doing the patrol properly. Pirate Joe. So they're all patrolling Route 1. Alright. Now let me ensure that they're going to move all the goods down there. Food stockpile. Give to a stockpile. Hopefully I did not forget which stockpile it was. This one's the food stockpile. Give to stockpile. Definitely some epic tunes here. Let me ensure that I didn't just screw that up. That is correct. Okay, good. So they should now properly bring everything here. Let me actually take a look at the justice system. Yeah, he murdered Eric. So I, I said Bob or murdered Eric. He was already dead because I don't I actually don't even know why. He should have survived that. And oh yeah, speaking of guys that should be dead or slash survived. How's our werewolf doing? He's on break. That werewolf is still in there. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's do this thing. The terrors of tweeting. Get down here. And ragamuffin as well. I want you to station up, homies. So I'm going to bring everyone down here. We're going to open this door. We're going to go in there and hope we're going to engage that werewolf. I'm going to send ragamuffin in as my earth mage. Hopefully he will be able to quickly kill that thing. Using his auras and stone skin and such. The main thing is... If he gets bit, if Ragamuffin gets bit, he's probably screwed. I think there are ways I can remove Lycanthropy or whatnot, but I'm not 100%. Where is that ragamuffin? Here he is. Alright, homie. Let's see, the werewolf is fighting. The spinning dust strikes the werewolf. Woodworker in the right lower leg, bruising the muscle. Swords dwarf slashes him. In the upper body with the forward edge of the steel longsword, tearing apart the muscle. Tearing apart the... Oh, damn! Tearing apart the heart. A major artery in the heart has been opened by the attack. The sword is lodged firmly in the wound. Let's see. The werewolf charged him, tried to attack him, but it was blocked. 
collides with the Swords Dwarf. He was knocked over. Strikes him, but the shot is blocked. Uh, Sergeant Stonemancer blocks the strike the yeah, and strikes the werewolf in the right lower arm from behind. With their left hand bruising the bone. Werewolf uh, woodworker misses the Swords Dwarf. Stonemancer kicks him again. Looks like he started to strike him with the magic staff, but uh, I guess he didn't have any ammo on him. Because he doesn't have a quiver. Let me take a look here, make sure. Make sure nobody got bit. Uh, looks like the Swords Dwarf blocked and then jabbed him in the left paw from uh, behind with his right hand, bruising the muscle. Uh, the Stone Man, or Stone Matzer, yeah. Ragamuffin. Hit him in the upper body from behind with the magic staff, bruising the skin. Swords Dwarf ran him through in the right upper uh, leg from behind with the tip of his steel longsword, chipping the bone, tearing a tendon, uh, causing the werewolf to fall over. Uh, the Swords Dwarf then sidestepped and slashed him in the left upper leg from behind with the reverse edge of his sword. And the severed part, so he just severs his entire left leg with that one strike. And then finally he gives him the coup de grace, as it were, and uh, slashes him in the lower body with the reverse edge of his longsword, severing him in half, thus striking down the werewolf. Aw, oh, yeah. That's some good stuff. Alright, let me go over here. Quiver. Used to store bolts and arrows. They're made out of leather. Hmm. Stone Matzer is fighting. Unit list. Okay, good, he wasn't wounded. I was worried for a minute there, because he kept having issues, and I was like, oh god, why is he, like, constantly f tripping? It's usually a very bad sign. Hmm. That's for adventure mode, though. Hmm. So, unfortunately, I cannot figure out for the life of me how I can force that guy to use a quiver. Hmm. It's hoping to be in shields, maybe. No, that's not going to help. How about weapons? So I can't specifically assign it to him. Inventory. Magic staff, magic aura. But he doesn't equip. You know what? That's the thing. I, you know, it's the military in this game is so ridiculously frustrating. I mean, it's like the most complex, annoying, bloody system in the game. Absolutely freaking ridiculous at times. It's like they honestly need to make it that freaking complex. It's like you would think that they could program the damn AI to make simplify it a bit so that if we, you know, told one guy, okay, congratulations, you're a ranger, 
you know, we don't have to screw around and tell them to go pick everything up. It would actually be really nice if they could assign their own equipment on themselves without us having to give them a profile. But honestly, I just want them to fucking do their goddamn jobs. You know, I want the ranger to go grab his bow, to go grab a quiver, fill that quiver with arrows, and then use it to train. You know, use it on a freaking target that you're assigned to train on, because that's what the job is set to. You know, if I tell you to go attack something, then I want you to properly take your quiver to the ammo stockpile, empty out the freaking, uh, you know, training wooden arrows you have in your inventory, fill up with whatever copper, whatever arrow I've set as combat ammo, and then go to wherever the hell you need to go to use it. You know, very simple things like that just become so ridiculously complex in this game because it doesn't freaking work properly. Like, if they have any other type of ammo in their inventory or in their quiver, they won't properly, you know, fill it with combat ammo. They'll just use up what they have, which can be incredibly ineffective against an enemy. If they are set to training, they will not actually use training targets properly. Even though there's no reason they shouldn't. There's, like, specific rules you have to follow with training targets, and if you don't follow every single one to the letter, then you're gonna run into problems and be unable to train. That's why I usually just despise ranged dwarves and go with the, uh, you know, melee dwarves, because even though they still have inventory conflicts and issues uh, getting set up and recovering their gear and stuff, at the very least they're easier to freaking manage and get to work properly. Like, I've yet, I haven't built an effective archer armory in a or armor, or armory, uh, army in a very long time. Even with vanilla dwarf fortress, it's just a royal pain in the ass. So I really do hope that Toady or someone is gonna dive into that system at some point here soon, and you know, just take the coding hammer to it and beat the shit out of it until it, you know, works properly for us. <laughs> Simplify the damn system so we don't have to constantly beat them over the head in order to get them to work shit. Like, even if you have to add in extra restrictions to the code, like say, okay, you can't have an army unless you have a specific, like a barracks of at least the same amount of beds. Like, you have to have a barracks of two beds, or one bed to assign to those, say, the one guy you have in a squad. Say we have a squad of just ragamuffin as our arcane dwarf. So, in order to have a proper military setup for him he has to have he has like complete requirements before he could be activa activated as military he needs to have a barracks set up with at least one bed dedicated to him one armor stand and one weapon stand he then needs either specific equipment or general equipment assigned to him like whatever type you want to have him have you know a mixed match of different like strong and not so strong armors you picked up and a weapon then you assign those to him he goes he picks them up once and they are now like labeled as his no other dwarf can touch these other than to haul them to either his respective armor stand or weapon stand either way they get stored there in the barracks slash armory, wherever you happen to put that thing, but it has to be assigned to their squad and have, you know, specific ones for them, even assigned to them. That would allow us to much, much easier handle a lot of issues that we currently have in the game. You know, their AI wouldn't have to derp around all the damn time to grab their stuff. Like, the only time, the only time they will drop their equipment, like right now, if you tell them to go somewhere, like say I want them to fight up top here, and then I'd say, okay, you're all, you know, you're all off the hook, go do whatever you want. They will sometimes drop, like, all of their gear just on the ground. Like, they just like, oh, God, no more, you know, slaving away at guard uniform. I just want to strip my uniform off and run naked through the fortress. Oh, it's so good. Feels so good. But, you know, it's just ridiculous. And then they have to come, someone has to come all the way back up, gather up all that armor, bring it to the stockpile, and then some other idiot can freaking take it. I mean, geez, it seems like, yes, you can actually specifically assign certain weapons to them, and they can, they will take those weapons, but then they can get possibly stored all over the damn place. So, 
once they initially grab their stuff, I believe it's, you know, coded to them. But still, they need to store things properly. Like, the only, like, if we tell them to, okay, go here and guard this for two seconds. Okay, you're done. Now you're off duty. Then they, their first step always needs to be go to their barracks, offload their stuff in their proper racks, and then go do whatever the hell they want. That way everything is stored in a single location. They're not having to run around the goddamn fortress for 20 minutes to grab each individual freaking item, you know? Make things less of a pain in the ass that way. But that's just what I hope to see from it, you know? I mean, Vanilla Dwarf Fortress has advanced quite a bit, but... I haven't really seen too much along those lines when it comes to the military. I haven't seen them try to fix a lot of those default issues that we still have in the game itself. They're doing a good job down here. I was going to set up some walls down here, but we're alright. Pets and livestock. We've got 161 pets. Slash livestock. That's a lot. It's actually way too much even. Do we have more of them? Do we have dwarves? Grimling. A magma elemental. We've got a goblin thief that we captured. We've got three different diplomats. And then of course we got everything down in the underworld. Which is gonna drive us nuts. Let's see if I can find my character here temporarily. Alright. Cause my guy should be talking to people and such, but he's not right now. Unit list. Maybe the problem isn't my isn't my baron. Maybe the problem is my mare. Yeah, okay, he's drinking right now. Which he's going to drink. Who do I have set up as my uh, representative, my broker? Yeah, Silver is set up as the broker. But no one is... The problem, the thing I'm wondering though is because nobody is actually bothering him. If he is the broker and he's the one they're supposed to be talking to, there should be a bunch of people in his room right now like, you know, talk to us, talk to us. See, look at like this right here. We have a whole set of copper greaves, like a whole set of copper armor. And a steel longsword. They just dropped it in the freaking hallway and walked away. That annoys the hell out of me. Because you're just creating more hauling tasks for everyone and just... It slows down the fortress. So I kind of wish they would work on the general AI for the... Uh, for the dwarves themselves. So that you don't have to micromanage them as much. Kind of like how with the uh, workshop plugin, we can assign them to, you know, make a certain amount of this item and then stop. That way we can have them, like, I don't have to micromanage them to build every single one of these, uh, you know, beds and desks and stuff like that. Coffers and whatnot. I could just tell them, okay, make so much of this, and then tell them to pl put the planning mode on and have them place it. Like, these are all really good features that should almost be brought into just default Dwarf Fortress. And made standard, because it seems like they do, they work really well for that. Dangerous terrain. Oh, frack me. I 
Well, I see what the problem is. I see exactly what the problem is. Main power, power plot gate. That's the one I need. So the power shut off. That was our problem. And now our freaking dining hall is flooding again. Effin' brilliant. See, this was just a shitty design, and it's all my fault. Has anyone pulled the lever for that yet? Looks like they must have. There we go. Uh oh, that's not good. Looks like it may have started, it may have stopped for good. I don't know if we can fix this problem. I'll have to keep letting it flood if one of them suddenly kicks into gear. There's an unhappy dwarf throwing Then we may be good, but otherwise our entire fortress is about to get flooded. Yeah, no, I don't think that's gonna stop, so let me quickly... Well, frack, that's not good at all. One thing I can do. I need to get everybody out of here before it drown, before they drown. Okay, burrow three. Everyone to burrow three. Everyone to burrow three. Let's go. moving yeah because our power our power systems were churning uh, and they ran out of they somehow but we need to do something to make sure it doesn't happen again they somehow ran out of water build a legendary dining room or something I did that and now it's flooding because of my shitty designs see I knew this kind of thing was gonna happen and I completely forgot to check on it again so every freaking one of my dwarves, 120 plus dwarves, are now going to converge on our dining, on our like cooking area here. In which case, once that happens, I'm going to have to restrict the entrance here completely. I don't think there's any way I'm going to recover from that. Yep, yeah, nope, they're not, they're not turning at all. Nothing is allowing them to turn. So yeah, it's boned. Get in there while you can, fools. I am locking these doors.
Oh shit. Oh, are you serious? You useless bastards! You did not put a door there! Fuck <gasps> me! Are you kidding me right now? Okay. I'd get out of there, boys. Also, this is supposed to be freaking closed. The hell, is my caps lock on? No. They just cannot be locked in, apparently. Well, that's great. <laughs> wow, this fort may be over. If they're, if they're still being this stupid and they've refused to lock this door, then we're pretty much screwed. Because I can't... I cannot tell them to shut that door and keep it shut. That's the problem I'm having. Like, they're flooding us further right now because they refuse to obey my orders. Why can I not forbid? The fuck? Yeah, I can't say- I can't- You know what? Screw that then. Just build a freaking wall there. Wall the whole damn- I can't, because the building is present. Ah, oh, It's frustrating! Fucking dwarves! Screw the lot of you, you can all drown. You can all fucking drown. Every fucking one of you can drown. I'm done. I am done with your shit. No, I think this is GG, because I can't get them to properly do what I need them to do. They won't lock that door, they just refuse to leave that place. So, if they can't, if I can't lock that door, they're gonna keep going through it, it's gonna keep flooding, and I can't get rid of that. So this might be GG. Fucking ignorant dwarven bastards. Ah, <sighs> Christ. Sometimes I wonder why I bother with the frustration. Uh, it just gives you a headache. Oh well. Okay. Okay. So I'll stop. I'll stop. we're pretty much in the major shit right now because they're gonna sit around there. They're pretty much just going and swimming in this freaking dining hall right now. Pretty much. It's already reaching almost level 3. That means it's going to be completely inaccessible soon. People are going to start drowning. Then it's going to be panicking. And it's going to be killing each other because of a freaking tantrum spiral. All because the freaking power... What the hell? Power plant went offline and would not start back up. Joyful. Well, fuck me. Next time, I guess I'll have to come up with a much better design for this with several fail safes to ensure that we don't fuck up this royally. Oh well. I'm approaching my time anyway, so I guess I'll call that as it is right now today. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to continue this here next time. I guess I'll leave it up to you guys. At this point, it's pretty much a, uh, well, I wouldn't say an unavoidable fuck up of death and destruction and spiral into madness, but it's pretty freaking close. I pretty much have to completely abandon that area there. I have to just, like, if the, if I can't forbid that door, I would have to wall it in, which it refuses to allow me to do. So there's almost no way I can contain that now. So, yeah. Mmm. Joy. So it's going to start filling up the lowest sections of my fortress up to this point, and the entire thing is just going to eventually be abandoned. Like, at this point, I would literally just hit the Abandoned Fortress button and be like, GG. Because of that just screwed up design, just completely effed me over. So yeah, I guess this might be the final episode for this, uh, this season. 
Regardless, thank you for watching. Have a great one, and I will see y'all another time. Dragon out. Peace.